smiling when you when you meet somebody for the first time, like not in a creepy way. But, uh, <laughs> oh, smiling really creepy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so smiling. I think. Yeah. Excellent. I think it's important when you meet somebody and they don't smile. It's like kind of mm. yeah, you don't really enjoy life. <laughs> I when, don't do business with you. When you smile at somebody, it actually raises their level of self worth and self esteem. It says, I value you. Mm. But when you go to Japan, don't show your teeth. I didn't like really? it. <laughs> so culturally, it's different. In, in the European society, we'll smile and we'll show our teeth. But in Korea and Japan, don't show your teeth. So I went to Korea with my wife and I'm walking around saying, Good morning. Smile. say you are. <laughs> and the people look at me and I'm like, I said to my wife, I said, gee, these people are really rude. She goes, why? And I said, because I keep smiling. She goes, why are you smiling at them? <laughs> I said, because it's the morning and you smile. She goes, do you want them to die? I said, to die? She goes, yeah, if you show your teeth, it signals death. <laughs> so I better put that on your list. No teeth. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? And never put your chopsticks in the rice bowl like that. Because that's a sign for death. So when you come to Taiwan and Hong Kong, right. avoid that one. How do you, so not <laughs> straight down, but to the side? To the side, yep. Never straight down. That's death. That's S -s which means death in Chinese. I, I went around Taiwan and I was on a political campaign. First person to break the law in 100 years. And a politician asked me to come onto the back of his float. And he, I did the PA. So we went around Taiwan he said, Daniel, I want you to say, Bai Tuo, Bai Tuo, Si Hao, Si Hao, Wong Jing Pi. And so I'm like a little uh, monkey and I just repeat what he said. And I went around town and said, Bai Tuo, Bai Tuo, Si Hao, Si Hao, Wong Jing Pi. And I did this all around town. <laughs> and I got arrested. <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the China Times newspaper, it's in the, Thai, in the Taiwanese newspapers. Because I got the language wrong. I was supposed to Si hao, si hao, but I was saying si, which was die, die, <laughs> die, die, Jimmy Ping, die. <laughs> oh, that's I love it. Well, this one was a little bit of a joke. Um, this was Joanna. She said, okay. "What is a joke? Cake, all varieties of cake built no, for no, no, mainly chocolate." <laughs> 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 So if you can meet somebody and offer cake, then maybe that would build rapport. I think that's really cool. Look, everyone, yes, yes. Chocolate cake, yes. Where's, where's my cake today? Yeah. You don't want to build rapport? It's just out there. Okay. <laughs> uh, mirroring and yeah. matching. Okay. So when you chat to somebody, you, you kind of mirror that. Like John sat there now with his arms crossed. If I was chatting to him in a coffee shop, Look, he's doing exactly the same thing. I would mirror and, or match and cross my arms. He must be closed off. Also, yes. <laughs> but but that's mm. I don't but I don't believe that. Mm. Interesting, yeah. isn't it? The book says he's are you yes. closed off, or is it just comfortable? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it. Uh, actively listening. I think somebody said that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, did you repeat that? Uh, <laughs> 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 there's, a, there's a smile. You get better at that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, trust. Yeah. So obviously, trust and rapport kind of go together. Mm -hmm. uh, paying a compliment, a sincere compliment, when when you meet somebody for the first time, like if somebody's got nice shoes on. I don't really notice things like that, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> but I do purposely, you know, lovely shoes. So <laughs> traditionally, for for men, it's shoes and their tie if they're wearing shoes, hopefully, mm -hmm. if you're not in Australia, and their tie. For women, it would be their hair and their blouse. Mm. Oh, the nails. Oh, the nails. Oh, the nails. <laughs> you see, when I worked in the corporate world, the first thing I recognised on anybody was the state of their shoes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if someone was coming for an interview, if their shoes were like really not clean, scrubbed or whatever, they failed. They were, fi they were finished. And you're shoes. army. So, clean shoes every single way. Mm. So. Yeah, you guys are the test. You got the job. <laughs> <laughs> Hire me, Jackie. <laughs> um, similar interests and hobbies. Mm -hmm. So, kind of relating. If you, you say you like wakeboarding, mm -hmm. um, I could say I don't have. I tried it. It's not a hobby of mine, but I tried it. I really loved it. It was great. Better than James? Mm, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> similar interests and hobbies equates for only 7% of report. 
Only 7%. Okay. But it does help. Yeah. So no. uh, empathy. Mm -hmm. um, body language. Mm -hmm. uh, tonality of your voice. I think is a big one. Big time. Um, being genuinely interested in them. Um, stuff I think we've all covered before, isn't it? When we've done training and things. And then the last one was cake again. <laughs> <laughs> Starting with food, we'll start with Brussels sprouts. <laughs> um, okay, so lack of eye contact, or too much eye contact in a freaky, scary way. Um, <laughs> Military, look to talk real. If I'm talking to you, you've got to look at me right. In Asian countries, uh, Philippines, Chinese countries, Taiwan, they have a don't look to talk rule. So if you're making direct eye contact with Asian races, this is highly offensive. Yep. So you should look at the lips. Brian Tracy says, you should actually look at the lips. They're the thing that's talking, so we should look at the lips. So with Asians, they'll tend to look away as a sign of respect. So Europeans will look to talk, they will not look to talk. Okay. Um, invading someone's personal space. Let me give an example. When Nikita, or Cup Noodle, my daughter's in trouble in Taiwan, we will avoid giving her eye contact. We'll take and we'll remove the eye contact, and that's the personal punishment. And she says, look at me, look at me. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's culture. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, invading someone's personal space. So, um, being interesting and not interested, me, me, me. So how do you be interesting when you meet somebody? <laughs> um, no, so if you just keep constantly talking about yourself and not interested in them as a person, so it just comes across very ingenuine and that you don't show genuine interest in them. So rather than being interesting and wanting to sell yourself, I'm so amazing, um, just take an interest in them. Um, cutting... Cutting into someone. Yeah, so cutting into someone. Did you hear what Simon had to say? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so cutting someone off when they're about to speak. So um, someone's trying to tell you something. Obviously, take the time to listen. How do you feel when someone cuts you off in traffic? A bit of road rage. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing happens in conversations. Yeah. Um, Using inappropriate language. Mm, you had some of that last week, sorry guys. That's the Australian coming out, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, personal hygiene issues. <laughs> um, tone of voice, um, for example, being overly aggressive or loud, mm -hmm. and try to sort of mirror that person as opposed to. So if someone talks quite loud, then obviously fine to talk in their language but if they're pretty quiet then don't scare them off. Um, not taking a genuine interest or being ingenuine. So maybe sitting on your phone while someone's trying to talk to you or um, yeah being insensitive to a variety of things whether that's cult cultural differences or things like that. Um, being rude, abrupt, angry or moody. Um, and body language, um, being closed off, for example, or distracted. Excellent. So now we can calibrate from what helps and what hurts. So let's start to do some exercises based on what we can do to start to build the report. So good job. Hello, my name is Brian Tracy, and I'd like to introduce to you my friend and business colleague, Daniel Tolson. Now Daniel is an experienced business coach who has consulted with thousands of clients to help them manage their time more effectively, remove self-limiting beliefs, and make a lot more money. Now Daniel has also competed with the world's top athletes at the Extreme Games. He is a former Australian champion wakeboarder and he's also led a team of more than 17,000 cabin crew members. As a business coach, Daniel combines his years of business and leadership experience with the time-tested and proven 
Focal Point Business Coaching Systems. Over the past 35 years, I have personally trained more than 5 million business people. I've consulted for more than 1,000 large companies in 79 countries using these exact techniques. And with Daniel here to coach you through them, you will be sure to achieve your personal and business goals faster and easier than you ever thought possible. Whether you work with Daniel in a group training or hire him as your business coach, you're guaranteed to increase your sales and income quickly in the months ahead.